Hi everyone, I'm going to walk through deploying a Django app to Heroku. This is a follow-up to the previous video where we built a blog application. In this video, we'll plan to deploy the blog app so it's live and anyone can access it. I've broken this video out into 10 sections. We'll work through each of these areas in the next 10 to 15 minutes. In the description below, I'll include links that provide greater detail on this deployment process. I want to start off by pulling up Django's deployment checklist in the documentation. Django provides this checklist to make sure the app is secure before deployment. We're going to focus on the two areas in the critical settings section, starting with the secret key. And we want to make sure that we don't deploy the app with the secret key uh, still in the project or commit it to Git. So to prevent this from happening, uh, we can start off by saving the secret key within our settings file here as an environment variable. To do this, I'm going to first go to my terminal and open up my bash profile. This file is used to store environment settings and the command we'll use, uh, nano is a command line text editor. So I'm going to open up this file in nano. All right, now that we have that open, I'm going to go back to my settings file within the project and I'll actually just cut out this secret key and then I'll return to the batch profile here and I'm going to write export and set this equal to blog key. So that's the variable here and paste that in there. And now I'm going to do control X to exit out and then hit Y to save my changes and enter. Now we can refresh the batch profile to recognize the changes that we just made with this following command here, typing in source and then uh, bash profile. And then now that has been refreshed. So what we can do is go back to our settings file here. And now I'm going to type in os.environ.get and then I'll type in the variable that we set and we called it blog key. And now we have access to the value of the secret key that we stored in the variable blog key. The other change we'll make in the settings file is to set the debug mode to false. We no longer want to show detailed error pages when the app is live to avoid sharing a lot of inside information about our project. The next item on the list is to create a free account on Heroku. So you can go to heroku.com, click on sign up for free and create that account. I've already created my account uh, ahead of this video. So I'll just plan to continue to the next step. I'm going to pull up Heroku's documentation for configuring a Django web app that we can follow along with. And I'll also include a link uh, directly to the documentation in the description below. So the first item here is creating a proc file. So I'm going to copy what they had there and then I'll go ahead and create a new file within our main project directory and call it proc file. And now that we have that saved, I'll paste this in. And then I'm just going to change where it said my project to the name of our project, which is blog. The proc file requires the G unicorn web server. So we'll take that command uh, included below pip install G unicorn, and we can go to our terminal and install this. Next, we'll install the Django Heroku package here which configures the app to work on Heroku for us. So we'll run the command pip install Django Heroku. And then as that's loading, we can scroll down here and we'll have to add both of these to our settings to, um, to configure this. So uh, the first one is import Django Heroku and um, it has us add that to the top of our settings page. So we can add that in here and then um, to activate it, we'll add this statement in and we'll add this right into the bottom of our settings file. Next, I'll create a requirements file. So first off, I'm going to run the command pip freeze to show all of our installed packages. And we can create a requirements file with the command pip freeze and then the greater than sign and the name of the file, which is requirements.txt. So when we deploy our app to Heroku, the dependencies that we have specified in the requirements.txt file will be automatically installed. Now that we have the app and files configured correctly, I'll open up the Heroku documentation on deploying an app that we can follow along with. 
The first thing we'll do here is install the Heroku command line interface. And we can do this by running the command here using Homebrew. So I'll copy this and uh, paste this into my terminal here. And once we have this installed, we'll be able to create and manage our Heroku apps directly from our terminal. All right, and I'm getting an error here because I've actually already installed this. But once we have this installed, we can run Heroku commands from the terminal. So I'll run the command Heroku login, which will open up a web browser to the login page here. And you can just click through to log into the account that you just created. Now that we've connected our Heroku account, we can move forward in the deployment process. Heroku manages app deployments with Git. And if you don't have Git already installed on your computer, I'll include a link below to install it. We can use a few basic Git commands to deploy the app to Heroku. So first off here, I'm going to do git init to create the repository. And then I'll do git status to display the files in the working directory and staging area. And then I can do git add period, which will move all of the files from the working directory to the staging area. And then I'll commit all of those here and I'll include a message describing the changes, which I said initial commit. And as you can see here, all of those files have now been saved to the local repository. Now we can create the app on our Heroku account and we can use the command Heroku create and then we can add a name of the app. And I'm going to call this blog app and then I'll add my initials here. And this creates the app and also a Git remote that's associated with our local repository. We can now deploy the app to Heroku using the Git command git push Heroku master. And we'll wait for this to finish loading here, but this deployment will fail because I missed a key step, which we'll cover next. And we get the message that the push failed. And we can see up above the error is that the secret key setting must not be empty. So when we're running this app locally, it works because we can keep these variables stored as environment variables. However, when we deploy the app to Heroku, we'll use config variables. So we'll have to set these and we can do that either from the dashboard or using the command line. So what I'll do now is go back to the bash profile and I'll copy the blog key variable and the secret key that we set that equal to. We can now return to the terminal and run the command Heroku config set. So it's Heroku config colon set. And then I'll, um, I'll just paste in the blog key variable and the secret key. And we can see that we now have set blog key as a config variable equal to the value of our project's secret key. Now I'll run the same command again, git push Heroku master. And this will once again deploy our code. And we can let this finish loading and make sure that we're not getting any errors this time. Perfect, so we can see that the app has successfully deployed and this is the URL where the app is currently live. Before we go check out our live app, we'll have to run the migrate command. So we've already committed all of our migration files when we push the code. Now we just need to migrate to create the database tables in our Heroku app. So we can run this command on Heroku using Heroku run, and then we'll add python manage.py migrate. And as you can see, all of the database tables have been created. Now I'll also create a super user here. And to run this command on Heroku, we'll just include Heroku run, and then the command uh, python manage.py create super user. And then it'll prompt us to create a, an account and we'll fill in the username and then an email address and then a password. And then we'll just have to confirm that password and now we have successfully created the super user account. Perfect, so now that we've done that, the last thing to do is to actually go on and check out the app. So I'll go to the link provided and we can also access the, this app by going to the Heroku dashboard and opening up the app there. So I'm just going to log into the admin page to make sure that I've successfully created the um, super user account, which I have, and I can see that uh, the tables are there. So now that I'm in the app, I'm just going to quickly test out the functionality. So I'll create a uh, quick post here.
and just add a title and some text and then I'll post that. And as you can see, that seems to be working. Now we have successfully deployed our app to Heroku. It is live and others can access it using your URL.